Hi, lovelies. I'm Queen Lovely. Welcome to my channel. And for those of you that are returning community members, welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I wanted to come on here today because a writer by the name of Monique Judge, she is a black woman. Um, she posted an op-ed piece about Amanda Sills um, on the Grio. And Amanda Sills really, um, she really felt the way. And she got on Instagram earlier today and dare I say crashed out. Dare I say Amanda Sills has officially crashed out on social media. Now, before I get into that, Amanda Sills did upload a video to her Instagram and her YouTube channel where she was apologetic and she conveyed that she was going to be more intentional about taking a step back and looking at herself and just doing some self inventory and working on herself. I will say that within that statement, because I'm paraphrasing, it was like a seven minute video. There was still periods where it was like, uh, I'm not sure if she gets it, but the fact that she's willing to try, I do think for those of us, such as myself who may do commentary or maybe observing the situation from afar and, you know, even sharing our opinions about it, especially on these public forums, such as social media and under these blogs and whatnot, we should definitely be not only receptive, but supportive when someone within our community, the black community is willing to take a step back um, and have a moment of introspection in hopes that they can show up in a way that is more palatable because that is her issue. She wants to be recognized and the way in which she wants to be recognized is celebrated, validated, awarded, acknowledged. And there's nothing wrong with that because yes, it's very important to love yourself. Yes, it's very important to be able to validate yourself and give yourself what it is that you're seeking outside of yourself. In addition to that, it's also very human, right? To want to have a community, to want to have a network, to want to have a sense of belonging and security and comfort and knowing that showing up in what you perceive to be your authenticity, what you perceive to be your soul mission, your anointings, it's not going in vain. And for her, in my opinion, from observing vain appears to be, I'm suffering. I'm making myself miserable. I'm informing myself um, and constantly my psyche is constantly digesting all of these injustices that are going on around the world specifically to black people and the least that I can receive um, or get on the back end is an award is a plaque is a high five and hell I can't even get into the Emmys black Hollywood party. I'm not even being invited out when Issa is releasing her champagne line, you know, the insecure cast still hangs out. We barely see Amanda, but Amanda hangs out with the guy who starred beside her as her on screen husband. So I honestly feel like it's the situation with Amanda where Amanda did a video where she basically was reading her old journal dating back to when she was like 14 or in the eighth grade, whichever one, I don't know, 13, 14. And she was drawing a parallel and saying like, I've been this way my whole life. And she told a story about how like one day her college roommate, she had to sit her college roommates down and ask them why they don't like her. So she's always had these situations. I remember when she got into it, I, I think Chris that um, is part of Pop Roast podcast with Alexander Rogers, shout out to them. Chris used to work with her when she was out here in New York City. And Chris said that she got into it with a homeless man on the train. Like Amanda just lacks discernment, awareness, and emotional intelligence. And that's a dangerous combination to have, especially in your 40s, when more often than not at that stage in our lives, we pretty much locked into who we are. I mean, I'm only 28, but I would just infer because I, you know, I'm getting real comfortable where I'm at. So <laughs> I could only imagine <laughs> 12, 
13, 14, 15 years from now, it's hard enough as it is to discipline myself and be intentional and, you know, um, say, okay, Aaliyah, let's take a step back. Is there a different way we could have handled that? Okay, you did what you wanted to do, but now that we're on the other side, how do we feel? How can we adjust moving forward? Like, I have a hard time doing that now at the age of 28. So when you're somebody like Amanda, where it appears that you've never done that and you're like 43, 44, I truly empathize with her because she doesn't get it. So I'm going to read the article first and I'm going to share my screen so we can all read along together. Okay, let's take it back to school. And then I'm going to play Amanda's response. And y'all let me know in the comments if her response it's the actual article okay so it says amanda sills is not a victim of anything but her own is it hubris is that how you say that which means like having this sense of importance like a strong sense of importance um a strong sense of self i feel like that's what it means i did google it oh pride or arrogance my bad <laughs> say I, I was in the, i was in the neighborhood i was in the neighborhood but you see i'm not too i'm not too proud to say you know what let me double check up actually the definition is pride and arrogance amanda that's all we be wanting from you but let's proceed so it says opinion. Amanda Sills recently complained about not being supported by black media or invited into black spaces. And she seemingly does not understand why people don't rock with her. Monique Judge. This is a black woman. Editors note. The following article is an op-ed and the views expressed are the author's own. Okay. I am an outspoken, highly opinionated black woman. My friends will tell you that I am no shrinking violet. I take up space everywhere, everywhere I go, and I am not afraid to voice my opinion when the need arises. Because of this, I'm well aware that I can rub some people the wrong way. I accept that and I own it fully. It's par for the course. So she's starting the article by saying there's many parallels between how Amanda shows up and is perceived and how I show up and am perceived. Um, and I've just learned that the way that I'm perceived, the way that people experience me, especially when my personality is off-putting, that's par for the course. It ain't going to stop nothing over here. That's basically what she said, okay? As an outspoken, highly opinionated Black woman with a large platform who regularly pub publishes content that gets people of all types, white, Black, or otherwise, and their feelings, I know that is... I know that it is going to come with a certain amount of backlash, either in the form of comments on my social media posts or nasty emails or comments left on my personal website. I've even had people try to reach out to publications I write for in an attempt to have me canceled. It's a thing. I also know that I haven't always gotten it right. I have been called out before for having a bad take. When it happened, I took a moment to think about what people were saying to me, thought about what I said, and was able to understand how what I said may have been stated incorrectly or been easy to misinterpret based on the way I worded it. That, my dear, is called reflection and introspection. I took those opportunities to either clarify what I meant, explain my point further, or own my erroneous take. It's not that hard, okay? Hello? <laughs> Amanda, Amanda Sills recently went viral on social media after complaining that she was not invited to the NAACP Image Awards. She believes that Black media is not supportive of her. 
Amanda Sills and I agree on some things. I'm always here for her. I'm always here for calling out white supremacy and the systems in this country that have been put in place to keep black people subjugated and marginalized. I applaud her willingness to tackle these topics and speak out about them loudly and unapologetically. Sometimes Amanda Sills gets things wrong too. And it's not about her delivery as she noted in her, in her video. It's about the problematic things she says. So now she goes into examples and th these are very few examples of the many examples that we've seen um, Amanda not check her tone, not check her facts, and most importantly, not check herself, okay? Take, for example, the time she actively attacked Samaya Rice, the mother of Tamar Rice. After Samaya Rice called out Sean King for fundraising in the name of her dead son, Samaya felt that Sean King was using her son to raise money for himself while nothing was going to the family, even though King himself made claims that the money was for the family. It's no secret, okay, so this is what Amanda said on her Instagram. It's no secret that I have side-eyed Sean King, she wrote on Instagram. However, bigger picture, nobody finds it someone odd, somewhat odd that she's just out of the blue going out of her way and being given every platform with no receipts shown to call out one by one black activist organizers that have been the visible faces of the movement. Just some food for thought. Samira Rice was asking that her murdered son name not be used for profit by those who didn't care about him or his family. <clears throat> and Amanda Sills managed to find fault in that so much that she inserted herself into a conversation that had absolutely nothing to do with her. <laughs> Calling out Samira Rice and implying she had an agenda against movement activists is nasty work and Amanda was rightfully called out for it. Okay. Then there was the time in October 2017. So this is exhibit B. Okay. When she got on Twitter to say, if you are buying Jordans and Nike suits, but you don't have a passport, you are losing in capital letters, as we can see. Passports are not accessible for everybody. They are pe there are people who cannot afford to go out to town, go out of town for the weekend, let alone travel to foreign countries. So what does a passport do them? Why do we degenerate? What the okay, can't say that word. What was I saying it right? Dignigrate is that a word? Let's see, let's learn a new word, honey, because y'all know me. My speech impediment be getting me sometimes. Let me see, copy and paste this. Let's learn a new word, okay. And how do you pronounce it? Let me see. Pronunciation. Hold on. Denigrate. Okay. Why do we denigrate people? Okay. Yes. And what the hell does this shit mean? To speak damagingly of, criticize in a derogatory manner. Defame. Okay. All right. You know what this reminds me of? <laughs> Y'all ever saw a jump in the broom? <laughs> <laughs> when Paula Patton was like to Loretta Devine, um, going going and get washed up for the optics. And Loretta Devine was like, optics? And she's like, um, the pictures. And Loretta Devine was like, oh, girl, just say photos. Just say photos. <laughs> That's me. I could be real simple at times, but it's okay. I own it. I don't know everything. The wisest person know they know nothing. Okay, so she gets into all of that. We remember this argument back and forth. Um, Rock Nation Brunch Twitter, <laughs> as we like to call it, uh, was pretty much just getting on people saying like, y'all will, you know, be at brunch every weekend and in the club getting hookah and stuff, but you've never been out the country. And I will say this. I have been around people that make fast money, whether it's sex work or whether it's um on the block, moving the weight work. And you really will be surprised that all a lot of these niggas know is Puerto Rico, um, the Bahamas, because you could get on a cruise that takes you to the Bahamas if you got a birth certificate. You don't need your passport for that. Um, in Miami, 
and maybe Houston, Atlanta. Seriously. And some of them never even been to the islands that's on U.S. soil. Like, it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's like, all you know is what you know, and you have no interest to know anything else. And um, that's another byproduct of just growing up in a low socioeconomic environment um, where you're just being socialized to just always play small. So it, it's much deeper than that. And see, <clears throat> even going back to that conversation as it relates to Amanda Sills having such a loud opinion about it, this is what I'll be talking about, like, uh, people like her, and you'll see her video in a second where she just goes off the rails, talk about all I do is fight for the black community and da 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 da. But you also, in the same breath, put them down. This is what I've said about Candace Owens, too. I enjoy Candace Owens, and she speaks a lot of truth, but. The problem with people like Candace Owens that that has an idea of what's going on and knows what they're talking about when it comes to some topics that are substantial to the black community is that hurt child in you that didn't get accepted, that was always picked last when they were playing dodgeball, you didn't get to sit with the cool girls, you wasn't black enough, they would say you talk white, you dress white, you act white because you can't dance, whatever the case may be, you didn't know how to do your hair, whatever the trauma is it still seeps through in a condescending way. Like you're not trying to really be like, hey, let me show you something. It's more like, hmm, look what I got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you dumbass. You didn't know this. Like, And when you start off that way or when you approach people with information that way, they don't want to hear it. Funky Doniva taught me truth without compassion is cruelty. And shout out to my homegirl, Monica, who taught me what good is being a truth speaker if you don't know how to present it in a digestible way or in a way that's palatable? What good is being an advocate for the black community if by your words, Amanda Sills, we don't fuck with you? If it's really not about you and it's bigger than you and because she, you'll see the video where she says this is her anointings. You're when you're anointed and you know that and you're truly doing it from a genuine, authentic heart posture of being in alignment with God's will, you know how to step outside of your wants and needs and say, okay, God, what am I supposed to want? What is it that I need to get what I want? Amanda has an issue, like most people, with control. She thinks that she can control people. You can't force people to like you and you can't bully people to have a favorable opinion about you. This is why the shortcut, the cheat code is to like your damn self. And it's hard and it's not a linear process and it's not always fun, but it's very rewarding when you start to get rejected during the process and each and every time it starts to matter a little less until it just don't matter at all until you're not even getting rejected because you learn to discern before even putting yourself in that position who and what's aligned with you and what's for you you have people that support you you have people that have come out and done youtube videos and opinion pieces lifting you up and you'll post those things on your Instagram story, but the things that get a YouTube video, that get an Instagram post that ends up on the blogs and goes viral on Twitter is your big, um, enormous response to the negative things being said about you. Because once again, it's an ego thing. You want to be picked by the guy that everybody wants to be picked by. And you're watching her get picked and you're watching her get picked and you're wondering why he won't pick you. When you really should be asking yourself, why are you seeking validation from a community that you claim overtly does not like you? It just don't make no damn sense. It just don't make no damn sense. It just don't. When you serve vulnerable populations to a degree, that's a thankless job. And if you want it to be 
some reciprocity, then you need to take control of your life and go where you are celebrated and appreciated. There are people out there that really fuck with Amanda Sills. It's not that no one fucks with her. It's certain people, organizations, groups, cliques that she wants to deal with her and validate her. And if you're going to get that specific, then people have a right to be just as particular and say, well, girl, you cool, but you know, can you dial it back here? And you're never willing to do that, which is fine, but stop complaining to us. It's like a crazy train. <sighs> she continues on Twitter. If you're buying Jordans and Nike suits, but you don't have a credit card, you are losing. If you are buying Jordans and Nike suits, but you don't have a credit score, you are losing. <laughs> so y'all remember that. I'm not going to get into all of that. I'm not going to get into all of that. Um, so the girl continues. Okay. She said, I won't even get into the rumors that the castmates from Insecure don't like her because I cannot state that as a fact. But what I will say is it doesn't escape notice that while the vast majority of them still hang out together from time to time, we never see Amanda Seals with them. And I said that at the top of this video. I'm sure there's a reason for that. Imagine you work with a group of people for the better part of six years. And when the job ended, they all pay you dust. That is Amanda Seals. <laughs> Child. Critiquing Amanda Seals for her bad takes and her tendency to be loud and wrong is it hating on her and it's not tearing another black woman down either. As black people, we should be able to offer valid critiques of each other without it being viewed as hating. We don't hold our own accountable. We look like hypocrites trying to hold anyone else accountable if we don't hold our own accountable. And she's correct. Amanda Seals is very good at holding white people and institutions that uplift whiteness and white supremacy accountable. She calls them out and draws attention to things they are doing that are harmful to the black community. I love that about her. I think Amanda could take the same magnifying glass and examine some of her own statements and actions to come to an understanding as to why there are some people who dislike her. Two black publications recently published articles about her. Both were simply calling for her to do the work of self-analysis and a self-inventory to see if any of the things she is openly complaining about, not being invited into black spaces and not being supported by black media could be a reflection of her own personal actions. Those articles have been painted as hit pieces against her. I wholeheartedly disagree with that labeling. We cannot be so fragile as to not want to be called out on our own bullshit. I agree. Amanda Seals is very vocal with her opinions. She makes sure everyone hears them. It comes with the territory of having a large platform. What also comes along with a large platform is the recognition that not everyone is going to agree with you. And instead of trying to play victim when this happens, taking the opportunity to either clarify or course correct would be the better option. But ego is a hell of a drug and ego is where Amanda Sales is stuck. I mean, stop me when she's lying. Stop me when she's lying. Amanda Seals is not a victim of anything but her own hubris. And until she recognizes that she is always going to, and until she recognizes that she is always going to be crying every time anyone says anything about her. And this is the woman who wrote the article. Okay. This is a fair fight, same skin complexion. And she, first of all, you, y'all always talk about fat phobia and plus size women. So like she said, she had, she's loud and opinionated too. She's loud and opinionated too. Now let's share our screens and see what Amanda had to say in response. Okay. Honestly, I've had enough. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Really? Three pieces. Three. 
free from three people I have never met in my life, from free publications that are supposed to be about uplifting black people, which is all I have dedicated my life to doing. Shit! What hubris do I have? You people literally cannot stand that someone has studied and is speaking on what they study, that someone has read and is speaking on what they read. You can't stand that someone loves us, that someone loves us so much that their passion is so exemplary and is exuding through the phone that it touches people who literally have never felt love that much and they don't know how to process it. That's what you're feeling. I wanna send all the love to everyone who has shown me love. But you people who are continuing to attempt to break me down, you will not break me. You cannot break me. I am loved, I am anointed, I am touched, I am working through the blood of our ancestors. You will not break me. And it is so sad that you are so broken that this is the effort that you would take to try and get some clout. And you know what? Let's say I did get broken. Y'all will be the first ones to be like, see, y'all be doing too much. No, big up to all my strong black women who are supporting other strong black women and every other person supporting us. We love you. The rest of y'all can suck up. Okay. Now I'm going to make this very short because you could just um, go back to my other two previous videos. This is the third installment to Amanda Seals Just Does Not Get It series. Y'all just let me know what y'all think in the comments. I ain't got nothing else to say. I don't have nothing else to say. I just read the article and the fact that she took that as an attack. Amanda is a flaming narcissist. You are never wrong, Amanda. You are never wrong. And you know what's ironic about this? You're weaponizing, because let's go to her comment section. You're weaponizing the fact that you've been able to create some support to where it's a situation of people coming into your comments and saying, oh my God, Amanda, da, 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 da. let's share our screen. Let's see the people that's in. It's the same people that's been in her comments. And I'm just going to end this. Well, shout out to Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah is unproblematic. But it's Tisha Campbell. It's Tisha Campbell. Tammy Roman. Look at them. This is bullying. This is bullying. How is this bullying? How is this bullying? I think Jesse Wu took a comment down. Because Jesse Wu had tagged the girl that wrote the article and said, come outside, we just want to talk. And that's why I'm saying this whole shit, or no, that probably was underneath this one. Oh, here it is. It says, you can keep it cute, Amanda. I won't get behind me. Come outside. We not going to jump you. And then she tagged. She tagged the girl. This is the problem that I have with this. That woman said nothing wrong in that article and she used herself as a comparative factor to let Amanda know, I'm not talking at you. I'm not trying to talk down at you, talk down to you. I'm trying to let you know that we have a lot of similar attributes. This is how I navigate it. And I just want to show you sometimes that I've observed that could be a driving factor in why you're having this experience that you have come down to the internet and publicly complained about and showed discontent about. Like, I, I just don't get it. I really just don't get it. And people like Amanda, this is what it looks like. You have you have people in your comments with blue checks. Tammy Roman, ain't Tammy Roman producing, directing, acting, and hosting? She can't get you no jobs. She can't get you no jobs. Tammy Roman does the comedy. Y'all can't do nothing together. Jesse Wu got a few gigs. Jesse Wu can't get you no jobs. Like, what's going on? Because you'll have people get in your comments and continue to get you drunk off your Kool-Aid. But the next day when you wake up with a hangover and you're still in the same circumstance, 
that they just was rubbing your back to it, the cycle starts all over again. Like I said, y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think. <laughs> I, I really feel bad for this woman because it's it's just like, and she's in therapy, but this just goes to show therapy only works when you know how to be honest with yourself. Clinicians are not, we don't wave magic wands. We don't wave magic wands. We're here to provide and suggest tools and tips to help you navigate your life. And no matter how much of an expert you may be um, as a clinician in any type of science or social science, you still need someone to be 100% honest with you on whatever it is that they're seeking your advisement for you to do your job the best. And Amanda just gives me because she lacks almost much self-awareness Whatever stories that she goes to therapy and tells, she probably always senses herself as the victim. And then it's crazy because it's like she'll be self-aware that she can be rude, she could be dismissive, she could be all these things. But once again, I'm telling you, she feels... I, I think another thing that's pissing Amanda off is I got into this social justice warrior mode because I thought it would be something to shield me from the experience I've had my whole life, which is I'm not likable. So if I go and position myself as a fighter on behalf of this community that I've never really been accepted into because people think I do too much and I'm too intense, that will take the edge off because now my personality will make sense. Now my personality will make sense. Because they'll be like, oh, she's that way because she's fighting for us. You know, I mean, if I was fighting and, and marching and protesting and advocating, I would have a nasty attitude too. But no, honey, <laughs> it's not working. And the crazy thing is, if we look at it from a superficial and non-substantial point on paper, Amanda has all the workings to be liking. She's beautiful. She's light-skinned. She's a slender woman well-spoken, very creative, very knowledgeable of the culture and everything. But the problem is she uses that as a way to look down on people and to other herself. And now you're getting to a place where that need for community, you can't deny that urge and that appetite for it anymore and no matter how much you cry and play the victim, people are like, girl, we still don't fuck with you. And that's what's really spinning her out. That's a tough pill to swallow when you figure out, oh, shit, I'm my problem and my solution. Not only do I have to make peace with the fact that I'm the problem, but now I have to muster up the courage to be my solution. That shit is infuriating. I have been there. And I feel for her because to have that epiphany, like I said, in your 40s, <sighs> Jesus is going to have to come down off the cross. I know we just he just had his birthday party or whatever on Easter, but baby, you're going to have to spend the block <laughs> because your child needs you because only God can help her because she don't get it. She just don't. It is what it is, y'all. Um, hit the thumbs up. Please let me know what you think about this below and have a great day. And um, stay safe. Bye.